how important was it to you to, to have this primarily be in their, in their voice, in their perspective? I think I realized pretty quickly in pre-production that not none of these kids had been um, asked to talk about themselves for as long as they wanted without any interference from an adult. I think when adults talk to kids, it's usually in the interest, in the best interest of the kids to whatever way that has to do with school or it has to do with home. There's always a motive as an adult caring for a kid in hearing them talk about themselves. And I think I may have been the first person who just said, tell me about yourself, keep telling me about yourself, keep telling me about yourself. And so I think that they just, I think we had a shorthand by the time that Jacob and I arrived to set and they were all, they knew that they would be able to tell their own stories. Yeah, I think it was just Jen established like several calls with them to make sure that they were very comfortable. And then that way on at camp, we did only have five days to capture everything. So that was pretty intense, but it was just the comfortability that Jen had with like doing pre-interviews. So that way their true voices could come forward. Have you been able to follow up with any of them? Like how are, how are they doing? They're all doing really well. Um, yeah, I'm in occasional contact with all of them. And um, it's really interesting to see now, almost two years down the road, some of them are applying to post-secondary schools. One of them got into uh, Ran With a W. Do you remember Ran With a W? Yeah. Ran With a W messaged me a month or two ago to say that they had gotten into college to be a funeral director. <laughs> which I think is the most run for the thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. You guys, um, about the inner child, right? Like, I just, what would your inner child think watching this film? <laughs> I, my inner child is with me every time I watch it, even though I've seen it so many times throughout post. I, I always, in particular in the dance scene, I always, always remember that as a teen, I wished so badly that I could go to a dance and dance with people that I wanted to dance with without being looked at as the only one in the room like that. And I don't know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a horrendous understatement to say I wish this had been around when I was a kid. Um, I think when you, in, in the generation that I grew up in and am now an adult in, there's a lot of second adolescence that happens when people come out because they were not given the opportunities to be themselves as kids. And the second adolescence is really fun, but it also would have been nice to have a soft place to experience that, that adolescence at the age that I was an adolescent. So I, it does, you know, it, it makes me a little sad too, to, to go back and watch this at the same time as feeling just so excited and happy and proud of these kids in the film. Jacob, how about you? Yeah, I think it's just, it's a mix of being like happy and sad kind of thing, because obviously to have that as a kid, that would have been amazing to have a community like that. Uh, just a lot of us grew up without that, but then it kind of makes you sad because you missed out on it at the same time, and then you're already so grown by the time you kind of develop that community later in life that you get to like miss out on first kisses and crushes and all these moments that we just never got to have. Yeah, it's sort of like that tender-hearted regret, like I grew up being sort of the only one in the room a lot too, and so even our film last night, Solo, we had a drag performance and I was just crying, like, because we've never had stuff like that here, right? And just being able to exhibit this film too, right? It just, it was very powerful to me, but it was that bittersweet feeling too of like, I wish I had those experiences when I was younger because now in my 30s, I feel like I'm being who I wanted to be before, right? And so thank you for doing this work. I think we have time for one more question. Oh. Oh. 
we have a question. Oh, oh. oh. wait, no, oh. let's take one more arm. I would just like to say thank you for making this. It was absolutely beautiful. I am a social worker and I work with uh, young kids and adolescents in the community. Um, and I can absolutely appreciate you telling the story from the youth's perspective and not including their parents and not making it about parenting and not making it about that, really giving them that uh, control and autonomy to, to, to talk about themselves and what they want to talk about. And even the serious stuff, right? Like the spider attack. Because that's, that's the, the reality of it. Um, but I, speaking about, you know, hopefully being able to stream this movie, I hope it's soon because I would absolutely love to play this, not only for some of the parents' groups, but but all of the youth groups too, so that even cis um, straight kids can understand good friends, though a lot of them don't have big, big issues in doing that anymore, and they're very proud of the up and coming generations. Um, but to do that, um, I did wonder, and I'll look it up myself, but I would love nothing more than to start doing some fundraisers. I mean, I know we have lots of camps here in Ontario, but I think I've really invested in it being in Alberta. <laughs> To, to go to, right? they've not got that resource, and so I would love to get in touch with them and start maybe doing some, some fundraising to, uh, to you know, just help them out in that camp because that's where it's needed. Yeah, actually, Camp Firefly has a fraction in Peterborough. That's a five-day camp in the summer, so it's this same experience, but not out in Alberta. It's out in Peterborough in the woods. They have like a few different fractions all throughout the country that specifically target areas where queer youth don't have access to the information that kids in the city of Toronto, they can ease more easily access it. But we do have a fraction here in Peterborough that kids can attend. Excellent. Uh, so um, where, where do you guys get coming up next? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're at liberty, are you? Well, what we have immediately next is the question we have for you is, can this stage rise and lower while we're sitting on it? <laughs> I don't think the insurance I don't think they'll let you know. <laughs> See, if this was the YMCA, we would get a talking to them. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. I have one last one. Um, what's the Tegan and Sarah connection? Okay, yeah. Because Tegan and Sarah are performing here in March, and I heard that there's some connection to the camp. There is. Uh, Tegan and Sarah, um, through the Tegan and Sarah Foundation, they do a lot of fundraising for the camp, and they are also friends with one of our exec producers, and that is actually how our exec producers found out about the camp, was through them. Yeah. Love it. We all know each other, so. Right. <laughs> I, I really actually just want to thank the Film Festival for having us. This has been really special. Thank you. And thank you all for coming out on this kind of dreary, Sunday morning. Well, well, thank you both for coming. I mean, this has just been, I, like I said, as soon as I saw this film, I was like, I have to have this, I have to have this. So, yes, and, and the fact that, that you two managed to make it out is just amazing. So, I think you, you connected with this film because you went to Gay Adventure Jam. I think so. <laughs> you, you didn't go to Habitable too, did you? No. Oh, okay. All right. That would be too much. That would be too much. No, no. Our, our parents sent us to girls' camps and stuff to stop us from having sex. Did it work? <laughs>